Hello and welcome to our remote GCSE information session. I'm Rachel Naylor and I'm the Vice Principal and I'm responsible for curriculum and options. I'm going to talk through the whole options process with you and hopefully it will be very clear at the end of it. Before I explain the option process, I'd like to address a few worries that you may have. I imagine there are many parents out there that are worried about the options with the disruption to learning students have had in the last 11 months. I want to reassure you that we will do everything in our power to ensure that your child will get the best possible support through this process. You may be thinking, why can't this be delayed? Let me explain why. Producing a school timetable, even in normal times, takes 12 months. I started planning for the September 2020 timetable in September 2019, and it wasn't completed until mid-July. The timetable and options are inextricably linked to the school budget, so we can only work within our financial constraints. We have to ensure we have the right teachers in school to meet the demands of the timetable, and that can take time. I have delayed the option process by a couple of weeks, but we have to bite the bullet and start it now. As a result of the issues thrown up by coronavirus, we will provide some flexibility in the first term of year nine for students who feel they may have made the wrong choices. However, I must stress it will be dependent on numbers in groups and the suitability of subjects for your child. We will do everything in our power to get it right for them so they can achieve things they never thought they could. So when students start their GCSEs in year nine, they have to study core subjects. These are subjects they have to do and they are English and they will be awarded at the end of year 11 two GCSEs, one in English language and one in English literature. They also have to study maths, and science. In science, they come out with two GCSEs. They also have to do PE, which is vitally important for their physical and mental health. And in year nine, they continue with their life chances lesson, where they study topics that are pertinent to life, such as relationship and sex education, British values, financial education, health education, and careers education. When they get into year 10 and 11, the life chances education continues through edge time. Let's talk about the key stage four subjects that we offer and that children can choose. Um, we have two types of qualifications at key stage four. We have the GCSEs and we have the technical awards. The technical awards are equivalent to GCSE. They're just assessed in a different way. So they do internal assessments, which are then marked and sent off to the exam board, but they also do external exams. So the options that we offer, we've got art and design, business studies, computer science. If you want to do computer science, though, you have to be reasonably good at maths. Creative media production, which is a technical award, design technology, digital information technology, which again is a technical award and it's about computers, using computers in the workplace, drama, fashion and textiles, French, hospitality and catering, geography, history, music. If you want to do GCSE music, you must be able to play an instrument or sing and during that time, you will get free uh, music lessons on your instrument or with a singing teacher. Music technology, that's a technical award. So that's for, for young people who like, to, like music, but don't actually play an instrument or uh, sing. Then we have PE and we offer GCSE P or Cambridge National in Sports Studies. What children do will, they will all study um, a, common, a common year nine and at the end of year nine, the PE staff will make a decision about whether the child goes down the GCSE route or the Cambridge National route. In some year groups, everybody does Cambridge Nationals. In other year groups, there will be a combination of both. It's all dependent on the cohort. Then we have photography, RE, separate science, 
with separate science, you have to be working at a grade four by in year eight. And then the Spanish. So let's start thinking about those choices. Students study three option subjects on top of their core subjects. Their first choice has to be one of the following subjects. Computer science, French, geography, history, separate sciences or Spanish. But let me just remind you what I said earlier. If they want to study computer science, they have to be competent in maths. And if they want to study separate science, they have to be working at a grade four in year eight. They then must pick four other subjects and put them in order of preference. Now, those four other subjects can be any other one from this list here, or they can be from anything on the previous list. So I just want to talk to you now about the English Baccalaureate and what it is. So the English Baccalaureate was introduced a number of years ago by the government and it recognises where pupils have secured a grade five or better across a core of academic subjects. And they consider those subjects to be English, maths, the sciences, including computer science, history or geography and a language. The English Baccalaureate, though not a qualification in itself, is a measure of success in these academic subjects. These are subjects most likely to be required or preferred for entry to college and degree courses at university, particularly the Russell Group universities, which are the top universities in the country. And they're the subjects that will keep the most doors open for our students. As a school, we recognise the benefits of doing the English Baccalaureate and we want to secure our children's future, whatever pathway they intend to follow when they leave school. The skills learnt in these subjects are essential to operate effectively in the global economy, ensure the UK's future prosperity, never more so now that we have left the EU. And secondly, just as important in the climate we live in, that we understand other cultures so that we can prevent conflict and live in harmony. So how do they choose which subjects to study? Well, the first thing and the most important thing is to choose a subject they're doing well in. I posted a data sheet on the parent portal so that you can have a conversation with your child about how well they are doing in each subject compared to their target grade. And that's the starting point. Next, they need to pick subjects that they enjoy. They're going to study these for the next three years. Things that they need to consider as well is don't pick a subject because your friend is picking a subject. You may not be in the same class and your interests will be very different to, to your friends. Don't pick a subject because you like the teacher. It, it's not guaranteed that that teacher will teach that subject next year or even your class. They may not even be in the school because they may have moved on somewhere else. And finally, don't pick a subject because you think it might be easy. The government changed this a number of years ago and now all qualifications are equally difficult. So we have to consider some caveats. First of all, not all courses are guaranteed to run. This often depend, is often dependent on numbers. So, for example, if only six children chose a particular subject, we couldn't afford to run that subject. Secondly, First choices are not guaranteed. Right? Children will come up with their five choices in choice order or in preferred order. However, it's all dependent on how the timetable, the option blocks are built. And it may be that they end up with their first, second and fifth choice, or for example, their first, third and fourth choice. Choices will be guided. So I will expect children to come to their one-to-one -one interview with their five choices in order. Um, but it would be unforgivable of me to allow children to do subjects that they would be unsuccessful in. So those choices will be discussed and will be guided. How will we support your child through this process? Um, 
in their life chances lesson over the last couple of weeks, they will have had an options lesson where the teacher will have explained the process to them, shown them where the option booklet is, and they've had the opportunity to ask lots and lots of questions. The GCSE option booklet, which is normally a physical booklet that we give out, is now on the school website under our curriculum and our GCSE options. And this session is summarising what is in that option booklet. So you can get lots more information in there. Also in the option booklet section on the website, there are short video clips from each subject area to give you a little bit more information, a little bit more of a feel of what the option subjects are like. And also there's the data sheet that I talked about earlier, that's on the parent portal. They will also have had or will be having GCSE taster lessons in their normal subjects via Google Classroom. So for example, subjects like business studies or digital information technology that they've never studied before, they will have an opportunity to experience that through their normal lessons. They will also have a one-to-one -one individual interview with me. Um, and that will be done through Google Classroom. It's options uh, Google Classroom. They've all been invited. They need to accept that invitation to the classroom because that is how I will run the interviews. Um, and those interviews, I will want, if, you, if it's possible to have a face-to-face, -face, so cameras, those interviews will also be recorded. Um, at those interviews, we are developing their interview skills for later on in life. So, for example, I will be looking at and marking them on things like their punctuality. So are they in the waiting room on Google Meet on time? Are they smart in their appearance? So please, no children in pyjamas. Um, clothes that you might go to an interview in, school uniform might be appropriate. Um, I'll be looking at their manners, um, their confidence, and that can be a tricky one when you're having a conversation with an adult. And as we all know, as parents going for interviews, it's very nervous. You have to act it out. And what helps with building that confidence is, is coming prepared to the interview. So I will expect children to come to the interview having thought about what I might ask them. So for example, what are your aspirations? Um, what are your favourite subjects and why? Um, what are your five choices and what order are they in? And that helps to give the children confidence. And I'll also be looking at attitude as well. Have they come with a positive attitude to the interview? I will feed back on those things as well at the end of the interview. Now the interviews will be 10 minutes and I will be strict on those 10 minutes. If parents want to be at those interviews, that's absolutely fine. If not, that is absolutely fine because I've got 210 children to interview. So 10 minutes is the length of that interview. Um, we're having this GCSE information session, so that helps you help your child make some of the decisions. Um, we've got Mr. Welch in school, who is our careers um, education and ad advice guidance person. And he is very knowledgeable on anything to do with the future post 16. So you can um, speak to Mr. Welch or email Mr. Welch. Just to let you know that we do have um, this qualification IAG award, which is at the bottom of the, the slide there, and we are at the gold level. And this is, I have to say there's not many schools in the country who have that level of award. And also there's the website www.startprofile.com, which the school will use um, and children will have their own individual account and that will help them to develop over the next three years um, and put together careers information. It will, can tell them information about jobs, the job sectors out there, 
colleges and that can be taken with them through college, through university into their first job. This is some information about post 16, so a few years in the future yet. Um, but pupils are required to continue into post 16 educational training until the end of the academic year in which they turn 18. And students that don't achieve a grade four in English or maths at school will be required to continue this at college. There were some changes to qualifications just a few years ago, and I just want to make sure that you are aware of this. GCSE and technical awards are more challenging than they were a couple of years ago. A lot of technical awards were actually removed by the government. Um, so the ones that are remaining are very challenging now. Most GCSEs are assessed through terminal exams, as I mentioned earlier, whereas the technical awards do have an external exam, but they also have coursework elements in them. And GCSEs are now graded one to nine. This is how the GCSE grades one to nine map against the old GCSE grades. So a standard GCSE pass now is a grade four, and that's equivalent to a low middle grade C from before. A good GCSE pass is a grade five, and that's equivalent to a top grade C and the bottom of a grade B. Um, we now have a grade nine, which is the very, very top of the children who used to get an A star. And uh, we also have the grade one, which is equivalent to the old grade G, grade F. Finally, from me, the GCSE form I will have, and it will be completed during the one-to-one -one interview. So it is vitally important students come prepared. The confirmation of GCSE choices will be at the end of May. I will send a letter to you via the parent portal and it will tell you everything that you need to know. I hope this session has been useful. Any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you.